Hi, I'm Rob from Projector Central and this is our video review of the Sony VPL VW325ES 4K SXRD projector. Whew. Stay right there. So for those who don't know about Sony's SXRD projectors, they use proprietary LCOS imagers. Now LCOS stands for liquid crystal on silicon, which has some unique benefits over LCD and even DLP technology. The first one is high fill factor. That means the design of the chip lets the pixels be placed very tightly so you get a really seamless image even when you're close to the screen. It's also easier with an LCOS chip to do a true native 4K chip, one that puts all the pixels on the screen at the same time, so there's no need for any pixel shifting. And since these projectors have three separate chips for red, green, and blue, they deliver equal white and color brightness, and they're immune to rainbow artifacts you get with some single chip DLPs. Finally, the last really important benefit for LCOS is that it's known for having dark native blacks and great contrast. So for all these reasons, a lot of serious home theater buffs aspire to a projector from Sony or its LCOS rival JVC. Now, although LCOS is considered the best for darker home theater, it is expensive. The 325ES costs $5,499, and it's currently the least expensive true native 4K projector you can buy. It recently replaced the VW295ES as Sony's entry-level 4K model. That projector costs $500 less. So let's have a look and see what's different. From the outside, the 325 looks exactly the same as the 295ES with the same dimensions at 31 pound weight. The only difference is that Sony is also offering the new 325 with a white cabinet option if that works better for your decor. On one side of the projector, there's a power switch and menu controls. On the other side is the same jack pack found on the 295ES. It's got a couple of HDMI inputs and a few control ports that include a LAN connection, a 12 volt trigger for a screen, an IR input, and an RS-232C. There's also a USB port that's strictly for firmware updates. The HDMI inputs are the older version 2.0B, so they're not the new HDMI 2.1 ports that might be suitable for 4K 120Hz gaming with the latest consoles. But no projector we're aware of today offers a 2.1 port with enough bandwidth to support that. What Sony does offer is a helpful input lag reduction control for gaming that I'll say more about later. The lens on the 325 is carried over from Sony's previous projectors and is still found in all but their most expensive models. It's an excellent 14 element motorized lens with a big 2.06x zoom and wide vertical and horizontal lens shift. It's also got powered focus, so you can stand right next to the screen while you zero it in. One thing that's missing is lens memories for use with a wide 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio screen. Nor does the projector offer a dynamic iris to further deepen black levels with dark content. Both of those features are found on the VW715ES step-up model, which goes for $10,000. Now the 325ES still offers the same 1500 lumen brightness rating found on the 295. That isn't terribly much by today's standards, but it was enough to get nice punchy images in the dark on the 92 inch diagonal 1.3 game white screen in my home studio. I even got passably good TV viewing in fairly bright ambient light. And as you'll see, the picture also held up pretty well on the 110 inch diagonal screen in our video studio. So what do you get with the 325ES compared with the older 295? Well, the key upgrades are under the hood and seen only on the screen. Sony recently updated nearly all of its home theater projectors with a powerful new video processor based on the X1 chip they use in their best TVs. The extra processing power allows for two key improvements. One is a performance boost for Sony's reality creation scaling and noise reduction feature. I couldn't directly compare the 325 with the older model, but what I can say is that it works really well. The 325ES delivered the cleanest and sharpest images I've ever seen from my 1080i cable box, and it made a lot of high quality 1080p discs and stream content look as sharp to my eye as native 4K. Another important benefit of the new chip is that it allows for dynamic HDR tone mapping. Basically, Sony is able to monitor the signal frame by frame and adjust the picture on the fly to deliver the widest possible dynamic range. This is done just with pixel level processing in the 325ES. 
On Sony's more expensive lamp projectors, they also engage the dynamic iris, and in laser models, they can also adjust the laser power to further deepen blacks or boost highlights. Still, you can clearly see the benefits when watching HDR on the 325. Sony's full-size remote is the same one it's offered for years, and it's a great remote with large backlit buttons that allow direct access to every image adjustment you could want. That includes one-touch buttons for every color mode, and a contrast enhancer control for on-the-fly fine-tuning of HDR. Now before we go any further, I want to thank Elite Screens for sponsoring this video and supplying the screen for this review. Elite makes very high-value screens that typically perform like more expensive materials. And some of them, including the 110-inch we're using today, are certified by the Imaging Science Foundation for accurate color points, dynamic range, and color temperature. Elite Cinewhite UHDB material is a matte white screen well suited for a dark theater. Its 1.3 gain provides a little extra punch for HDR or viewing in moderate light, and it features Elite's edge-free Aeon frame with a super thin bezel. You can learn more about all of Elite's screens at the company's website. So as far as image quality goes, I didn't have to spend more than 10 seconds looking at the picture on the 325ES to know it was something special. For standard dynamic range 1080p movies, the projector's reference color mode delivered a truly awesome picture right out of the box. The 325 exhibited great flesh tones and high accuracy on things like green foliage, mountain landscapes, blue skies, and other easily recognized colors. Colors were also well saturated and vibrant. But best of all was the 325's excellent contrast. I can't say enough about how the deep native black of the SXRD imagers really made things pop off the screen. This added depth and dimensionality I'm just not used to seeing with most projectors. Even my really dark test clips, my black level torture tests, look surprisingly good despite the lack of a dynamic iris to help shut down the light. The 325's great contrast also contributed to its superb detail. It helped the Reality Creation engine work its magic when scaling up Blu-rays to the projector's native 4K resolution. With well-photographed content at normal viewing distances, I really couldn't tell a difference in the sharpness from true 4K. Now, HDR also looked amazing once I got the projector dialed in. As we explained in our full review on Projector Central, Sony approaches projected HDR from a purist, creator's perspective. Their tuning seeks to preserve highlight details even at the expense of rolling off the brightness to a level that some viewers may find too dark. For example, the reference picture mode that looks so good with SDR proved way too dark and muddy in its HDR version. But switching to the bright cinema HDR mode sacrificed only a touch of color accuracy and worked very well. Using it along with the dynamic HDR enhancer menu, I was able to adjust the picture for punchy, visceral highlights with most HDR content. Colors also look great with the projector's relatively wide gamut, which we measured at about 80% DCI P3. You can read more about how the 325 handled HDR in our full review at Projector Central. Though the 325ES isn't promoted as a gaming projector, Sony includes an input lag reduction switch in the menu. It's on by default in the game picture mode and can also be turned on for any of the other presets. It cuts the input lag from a rated 80 milliseconds to an advertised 27 milliseconds with 4K 60Hz signal. We couldn't verify that with our Bodner lag meter, but we measured around 36 milliseconds for 1080p 60. Even 27 milliseconds is too much lag for competitive gaming, but it's still very good for a projector, and most gamers won't notice 30 milliseconds or less. Finally, the 325 also delivered some of the best 3D I've seen from a projector. You can watch 3D with off-the-shelf RF shutter glasses, no separate emitter is required. The 325 obviously didn't have the brightness of projectors rated at 2500 lumens or more, but the color through the glasses was surprisingly good. Skin tones looked mostly natural right out of the box with no obvious green or other tinting. I eventually dedicated the bright game preset mode for 3D and with some modest tuning got very satisfied satisfying pictures. You'll find my final settings for 3D in our full review. All in all, the VPL VW325ES lives up to its $54.99 price tag with some spectacular images for SDR, HDR, and 3D. Now its main competition at this price will be JVC's DLA NX5. 
That projector costs $500 more, but also comes with a higher brightness rating, a dynamic iris, and JVC's own version of frame-by-frame -frame dynamic tone mapping. Now, without looking at these models side-by-side, -side, we really can't say which has the better picture overall. But what I can say is that the Sony 325ES is a great achievement at its price, and one that easily earned our Rare Editor's Choice Award. You can read more about this projector and see our measurements and final settings by using the review link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and as always, click the thumbs up button if you liked what you saw, and don't forget to subscribe and sign up for alerts for our future videos. See you next time.